Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. How many people believe that? And that's very, very real. I believe that God is all-powerful. Do you believe that? I, I just want to just some things that we've been sharing over the last months, things that we've been talking about. I believe we sang tonight, today, Jesus wears the victor's crown now. Amen. He is victorious over every enemy. There was a problem. Unfortunately, Satan deceived Adam and Eve, uh, which resulted in man's being man being separated from God. God was not separated from man, but man was separated from God. God had a plan, though, to reconcile us back to Him. And the only way that He can do that is the way of salvation. There's no other way to believe that. That's why Jesus said in John 3, 7, Marvel not that I say to you, you must be born again. Friend, there's got to come a time when we bow the knee and acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Acknowledge Him as Lord of our lives. Only the new birth brings us back into relationship with the Lord. Though in all this thing, God never stopped loving us. Through all the problems, through all the rejection, all the things that God never stopped loving us. I don't know about you, but I think that's amazing. I didn't deserve God's love. Your new birth opens the door for the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. And working in our lives, He is. The devil will do anything he can to stop the process of the new birth taking place in our lives. And friends, it is a process. We can either reject it or we can accept it. We can go with the flow or we can try to swim against the current. But there is a process that you and I go through. Uh, it says here in the beginning that we start as babes, but we grow into maturity. There's a process of growing up in God. God doesn't expect us to know everything and do everything the day we're born again. But know this that our name's written in the Lamb's book of life. Satan comes to hinder this growth and keep us from reaching our potential. So many people got so great potential, but the enemies hindered it and they've allowed him to hinder it. I want you to have a look with, at 1 Corinthians with me, please. 1 Corinthians. And this is what, what, he, what Paul spoke and I, brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and, and not with solid food. For an, until now, you are not able to receive it. And even now, you are not able to be, still able to bear. For you are still carnal, for where there are uh, envy, strife, and divisions among you, you are, you are carnal and behaving like mere men. Paul speaking to the church in Corinth, Satan, through envy, strife, and division, has stopped the growth of God in God's people. Why does the do devil stir up strife in our lives? Why does the devil try to stop us from growing in God. You know why? Because he is terrified of the church's potential. He is terrified of the potential that is in your life. And he will do whatever he can to stop you. He, Satan, will tell you all kinds of lies. You'll never make it. You're useless. Why don't you just give up? You pass to you by date anyhow. You know, the Bible tells us in James 4, 7 to resist the devil and he will flee from you. The Bible also tells us in James 4 there that we're to draw near to God. And if ever, if ever there's a time we need to draw near to God, it's this hour that we're living in right now. Because the enemy goes around like a roaring lion. He wants to deceive the church. And even the very elect, the Bible says, will be deceived in the end times. People will give themselves over to things, false doctrines, false religions, goodness knows what else. 
But it is time to draw near to God. It's time to resist the devil. Satan is terrified of the born-again, spirit-filled, Bible-believing Christian. And he'll do whatever he can to stop you. He heard Jesus say one day, we're speaking to his disciples, he said in John 14, 12, as he'd been healing and delivering and setting people free, casting out devils, he said to these disciples, he said, and these things that I do, you can do also. And greater things than this will you do because I go to my Father. The devil, I believe, has regular nightmares when he remembers these words. He has regular nightmares. And I, I want you to have a look with me in the book of Matthew 8, 28. This is a story uh, when a legions of demons tried to stop Jesus passing that way. These demons sense the anointing. But I want to tell you there's something that's beginning to build in the church. It's called the anointing. It's there's something that's starting to build and it's starting to build and it's beyond the natural ability, but it's God's ability. And God is beginning again to pour out His Spirit like He said He would in the last days. And the anointing of God is starting to flow. I'm believing that we're going to see every aspect, every part of the church, whether it as, be, as we begin to worship, that the anointing will come in, that demons will actually get up and leave. As the musicians start to play, that they will be taken over by the anointing and something supernatural will get around their lives and they'll play under the unction of the Holy Ghost that the devil has no answers for. That the people will begin to worship that will usher in the very presence of God. I tell you what, I'm excited about what God's about to do. But I want to just read this to you if I can. Matthew 8. You just have to bear with me a little bit here as I find these scriptures. Matthew 8. Verse uh, 28. And it says in verse 28, and it says, When he'd come to the other side, to the country of the Gadareans, there met him two demon-possessed men coming out of the tombs, exceedingly fierce, so that no one could pass that way. Here, here are these people, that these, these two demon-possessed men, exceedingly fierce, and, and, and they were carrying something of the enemy. They were carrying fear. They were carry, carrying all this stuff there that, that really uh, tormented the people of God and people that wanted to go further with God, people that wanted to go into this particular place could not go in there because of their exceeding, uh, the, the, the way that they were, just horrible, horrible things. Exceedingly fierce so that no one could pass that way. And suddenly they cried out saying, and as I said before, suddenly these men that, that, that had lived the high life, I guess, and got all the accolades from the enemy as they'd stopped this one and these ones from passing. And, and here they were thinking they were just so wonderful and so powerful. And goodness knows what. All of a sudden, they notice that there's a greater one that dwells within that man than that's in me. And I believe that this is a church we've got to rise up and the greater one has to be able to manifest himself through our being so that I don't care who it is, whether it's demonic, whatever force it is, they will see the presence of God. They will see the anointing of God. They will see something there. And these cries, all of a sudden, they started to cry out. Oh my God, I'm looking forward to these days. Are you looking forward to these days? And, they, and suddenly they cried out saying, what have we to do with you, Jesus, the Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Have you come to torment us before the time? And it says there that Jesus just said to them, go. And, when they, and, they, and he came out of the man. He convulsed the man, but he came out and the man was set free in Jesus' name. Let's have a quick look at the book of Mark, Mark chapter 1. It says here in verse 21, Then they went out into Caper Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered uh, the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his teachings, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. I, I want to say this again, I believe too, that this anointing is going to bring about an authority 
It's going to bring something on the inside of us that's going to cause us to rise up. It's going to cause us to stand in our office and understand who we are. And it says here that the people, as as Jesus spoke, they were astonished at His teaching, for He taught them as one having authority and not as a scribes. Now there was a man in the synagogue that had an unclean spirit. And he cried out saying, let us alone. What have you to do with us? Uh, What, sorry, what have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him saying, be quiet and come out of him. And the unclean spirit came out of him. What an amazing story these are. I want to tell you the demons, they're terrified. They're, they're so terrified of the, of the church, they'll do whatever they can to stop you from becoming what God wants you to become. And we, the church, I believe, are God's representatives on this planet called Earth. Jesus, the Lord, we are His body. He is the head. We are His body. In John 15, Jesus, the vine, we are the branches and the branches are to bear much fruit. Man, I long for the day when the church will take its place. I heard in the prayer meeting this morning as people were praying and they were, they were praying, Lord, we long. There's, to see, there's something that is what I believe is beginning to stir in the hearts of people. And as we go to prayer, we're not just saying, oh God, I pray for this and I pray for that. But there's something that's beginning to stir on the inside. It's a longing, amen. There's a longing, my God. I long, I long to, to sense that presence, amen. I long. To, to carry that anointing and that mantle that, you, that you're going to place on the church. I long, I'm hungry for it. I, I will push through, I will try and do everything, whatever I can because I believe that we're in these days that God is pouring out His Spirit. I long to see this time. I long having authority, the anointing, and the moving in the supernatural power of God. Then and only then, I believe, that the demon uh, forces will start to cry out, let us alone, let us alone. What have we to do with you, church of the living God? (laughs) What have we got to do with you, church? You see, friend, there was a church, the Bible was talking about this church where Jesus went into, And he walked into this church and it was just normal, but there were demon-possessed people sitting in the church. I want to tell you, friends, when the anointing comes, there's going to be a shaking. There's going to be a rattling. There's going to be a rolling. Hallelujah. Amen. There's going to be a great awakening, I believe. Having authority and the anointing and moving in the supernatural power of God. That's what I long for. I I long to see that. I long to see people get healed and delivered and set free. Demon forces crying out. Man, I believe for it. I mean, how many people believe for this? Don't just think, oh, poor old Neil, he must have had a bad pizza last night. (laughs) Man, long for a desire, put a desire. The Bible says whatever, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, if you believe, you shall receive. Amen. I desire to see the mighty power of God moving. I desire to see demons screaming and running in terror. Hallelujah. I desire to see people healed and delivered. I desire to see people that are broken and smashed where the enemies had a field day rise up above it and kick the enemy right in the butt. Hallelujah. Amen. I long for that. Amen. I, I, I desire that. I dream of that. I live for that, amen. I live for that and I believe we're gonna see it. We're gonna see it. We're gonna get up to preach and demons are gonna start shouting out, I know who you are. (laughs) Who kashaka bundi, amen. I know who you are. Let us alone. What have we to do with you, church of the living God? I know who you are. Have you come to torment us? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You're the blood-washed, spirit-filled church of the Holy One of God. Then we would rebuke it and command it to come out just like Jesus did. 
just like Jesus did. So that's why Satan tries so hard to keep us down, keep us in Rumble Alley. I want to tell you, friends, it's time to take a right turn and get out of Grumble Alley. Get into Rejoicing Street, amen? Getting in, getting, get into Hallelujah Lane. <laughs> get into something there, man. Get out of that Grumble Alley. Isaiah chapter 60 says, Arise, shine, for the light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Amen. Friend, it's not a time to sit around being defeated. It's a time to rise, shine, and show forth the glory of God. Amen. It's time there to give yourself a shake. I don't know about you, but you have a purpose and you have a plan. You have a destiny. You've been ordained by God. You have been chosen by God. You have been filled with the Spirit by a living God. Amen. It is not a man created thing. It is a God thing. Amen. You have been filled with the Spirit and with the power of God, not just so as that you can walk around saying, look at me. We're not Mr. Atlas. (laughs) Just walking around Arnold Schwarzenegger. We're, we're just walking around flexing your muscles and, and there, and glory to God, he hasn't got enough power of God in him to blow the fuzz off a peanut. <laughs> glory to God, amen. The power of God, the anointing of God, friend, come on. We, 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 this is our destiny. This is our, this is our bread. This is why we live. This is why we're here, amen. We're here to show forth the glory of God. And friend, I want to tell you, every time the enemy has a crack at you, every time he has a go at you, it's because he's terrified of you. But oh, God loves us. He's given us everything that we need to, to pertain to life in the God. He's given us everything that we need for salvation and more. Amen. If you're not saved, glory to God, you need to get saved. Saved. What are you talking about? Saved. Saved from yourself. Saved from your own stupidity. Saved from the enemy's plan. Amen. If you've been born again and you're still on baby food, man, we need to get us a bit of steak. Hallelujah. Amen. It's time to eat steak. Amen. It's time, time. God just honoured us with His presence in this house this morning, amen. Why don't we honour Him? Jordan got up and spoke about honouring, honouring. How can I honour God? How can I really honour God? By just sitting back, but we can rise up, shake off some things. Walk into your destiny. Take that anointing, put it on yourself and walk in it. Let's stand to our feet this morning. I don't know about you. I I don't know where you're at today. But I want to tell you, if God's talking to you this morning, if He's talking to you today, as I believe He would be, I want to lay hands on you. I want to pray with you. This could be the day. This could be the moment. This could be the the moment that your whole life was transformed. Everybody's had a moment, amen? Everybody's had a moment. You want to come? Come. We'll impart, we'll believe, we'll shuck it up on thee.